What's up everybody, Rob here. So, Russia has a long history of secret state police, from the current Federal Security Service, to the legendary Cold War organization of the KGB, to the repressive and infamous NKVD, which was the terror of the Soviet Union. All these have precedent in the Opreshnina, which was established in the 16th century by Ivan IV, better known as Ivan the Terrible. So here we go, a very quick look at the Opreshnina and the Opreshniki. All right, let's get to it. So the story starts in 1558 with the Livonian War, a conflict that was started between Russia and Livonia, which is modern day Estonia and Lithuania, more or less, but would eventually turn into a giant dog pile, which would be joined by Sweden, Denmark, Norway, and the Teutonic Orders, and um, things were not going well for Russia. Things would come to a head in 1564 when Andrei Kurbsky, a boyar of Russia, defected, and Ivan, being the, somewhat of the paranoid sort, took this as a personal insult. This, along with other apparent treasons, forced Ivan to temporarily abdicate his throne. It's a little more complex than that, but for our purposes here, he abdicated his throne. Now, the citizens of Moscow begged for him to return. And he did so, but only on the condition that he should be able to form an Opreshnina, or separate land within the realm under his direct control, that he would be able to punish treasons when and however he saw fit, with no regards to laws, precedent, or basic human decency. Everyone agreed to this for some odd reason, and the Opreshnina was established. These were lands in the various towns and districts of Russia, which would be set aside for Ivan's personal governance, outside of the influence of the boyars or any other aspect of state administration. Basically, it was his own personal playground to torture and root out treason however he saw fit. Russia was then divided between the Opreshnina and the Zemshina, or land, which was the rest of the nation which would be administered by the boyars. The nobles of the lands of the now-established Opreshnina would be forced to relocate elsewhere, although a small number of them did stay to help administer the new territory. Now, once ensconced safely within the Opreshnina territories, Ivan then established a personal bodyguard of 1,000, although this would soon swell to around 6,000, called the Opreshniki, or Opreshnik, which is singular. So, Opreshniki, plural, Opreshnik, singular. These would be Ivan's terror troops as he sought to punish those he saw as traitors to the realm or pretty much anybody who crossed him in any way whatsoever. The Opreshnina was used as a way for Ivan to break the power of the boyars, individuals that he thought were undermining his authority at best and were treasonous at worst. Basically centralized power in himself rather than the nobles of his realm, a form of royal absolutism absolutism which was becoming in vogue at this time. So the bodyguard of the Opresniki were hand selected by Ivan for their loyalty and dedication to the Tsar and this would be reflected in their oath which included not eating or associating in any way with anyone outside of the Opreshnina lest he and the other person both be executed for treason. Basically you lived, breathed, and died within the Opreshnina and if you left it or even conversed with somebody who was not within the Opreshnina you would be seen as a traitor and dealt with appropriately. Ivan's a very reasonable guy obviously. So, acting within the Opreshnina, the Opreshniki acted with near total impunity, hunting down traitors to Ivan, both real and imagined. They would ride on black horses and would dress all in black like monks. Now, keep in mind these are Orthodox monks, not Catholic monks. Their style of clothing is a bit different. And um, just to um, you know, add to the vibe a bit, they had a symbol which would be a dog's head on a broomstick which is incredibly disgusting and disturbing. But it also had a symbolic meaning, both sniffing out treason and then sweeping it away. So basically, they rode around Russia like the Nazgul, but with Spot's head as a hood ornament, which is nice. Now, they could be ruthless in their pursuit of threats to the Tsar, obviously. Now, the Opryshniki could and often did loot, pillage, murder, and do pretty much anything they want that if I were to describe, this video would get demonetized, so I'm going to leave it to your imagination. They did this to pretty much anybody who fell into their sights, treasonous or not. 
Uh, they were big fans of torture to get information out of people, including beating people, burning people, and very popular would be hanging people by their wrists. So basically you get a tree, you tie a rope around their wrists, and you hang off there, and you leave them out there to stretch a bit. You might say that, oh, that's not too bad. You just stay there for a couple you know, days on end. It's not a pleasant experience. Now, notable incidents of their depravity include the expulsion of the nobility of Suzdal and their families. In 1566, Ivan expanded the Opreshina to include more lands, and those nobles living on those lands were evicted and forced to flee to the Zemshina in the middle of Russia's winter. As you can imagine, this is not a pleasant experience because, you know, Russia's winter has kind of a reputation, which is completely well-deserved and well-earned. And anybody who helped them along the way would be executed with extreme prejudice as treason, as traitors to the realm. So basically, these nobles got kicked out of their lands, were forced to flee to a nearby, well, not quite so nearby, neighboring city. And they did this in the middle of winter, and if you helped them along the way, any aid that was given to them would re would result in immediate execution. Pleasant experience. This would pale in comparison to what would happen in January of 1570. The Oprishniki accused all of the nobility in the city of Novgorod of treason, selling out the nation to Poland-Lithuania. So they, along with Ivan, stormed into the city and they started taking heads. Obviously, this is an absurd thing to accuse an entire city of. Basically, like the entire city is treasonous, but that really didn't help anybody. They would start with the churches and monasteries in the city and the surrounding area, and they would take their gold and treasures from the churches, and they would then arrest the clergy, torturing them along the way. They then moved on to the rest of the population. Nobles were captured and tortured for information about their alleged treasons, and while some were pardoned for their quote-unquote crimes, many were found guilty and executed, some by burning, but others were thrown into the nearby river and drowned. And, and there would be Oprashniki waiting in boats to push those escaping back under. So basically, if you popped your head up, they'd whack you in the head with an oar and uh, made sure you drowned. Now, the exact casualty figures for this incident are unknown, but they range from a few hundred to a few thousand. Uh, unfortunately, the documents have been lost to history, so we don't know. Now, as you can imagine, the Oprishnina was very good at terrorizing people. They're terrible at dealing with external enemies. In 1571, the Crimean Khanate attacked Moscow, and the Oprishnina were unable to stop them, showing Ivan that they were, in fact, a terrible idea and needed immediate replacement. A year later, the separate lands of the Oprashnina were folded back into the Zemshina, making Russia a unified nation once again, with Ivan again as the supreme ruler. The Oprashniki were integrated back into the army, the organization itself disbanded, and the estates that were seized to form the Oprishnina were given back to their original owners if they were still alive, of course, that being, of course, a massive if. And for their failures, the senior members of the Oprishnina were executed because, of course, they were. Now, results of all this were the centralization of power in the hands of the Tsar as opposed to diffusing power to the nobility, setting a precedent for authoritarian rule. Basically, he, Ivan, caused so much terror and eliminated some of the top nobles within his country and basically freaked out everybody to such a point that very few people actually dare to question him from this point on. And this set the precedent for authoritarian rule in Russia, which continues to influence Russian politics even to this day. So there you go, just a really quick look about a pretty interesting subject. I hope you found it interesting and entertaining. Anyway, that is it for this video. Please hit the like and subscribe button. More videos coming around whenever I get around to it. Have a good day. Or don't have a good day. You're an adult. Have any kind of day you want. See y'all later.